Hey YouTube, Tom itself here. I'd like to take a minute to talk about the Aim Assist is Overpowered video I posted the other day. Some of the comments and feedback I got on it, which are much appreciated. Some of my thoughts on the whole situation, and we'll just expand on that idea a little bit more. In the background, I've got some of the gameplay I got while I was trying to get clips for this video. It's some domination on Operation Locker. Just the reasonably tight, close quarters nature of it, and being really dark, I found really helped uh, show off some of the crazy stuff that the aim assist can do. It is just a little bit slow here at the start as the server fills up, but it picks up quite nicely, and I manage a rather nice kill streak that I, I would like to show off, I guess. You will recognize a few of the clips from the original video, but not everything made it in. I've just only so much time in that short video, so you're going to get to see some more of me abusing the aim assist. Well, that would have made it in if I'd finished the double, but uh, i got to switch to the pistol. Anyway, it really can't be a good thing when you find you need this much of the Snap 2 aim assist in the multiplayer of your game, but clearly DICE is trying to keep up with Call of Duty's pace, or maybe I should say keep up with the PC pace, and let console players try to aim a little more accurately, uh, keep things moving, and act a little more like the PC on the console. But they've still got the lower frame rate on the previous gen consoles at least, and I'm still not liking the look sensitivities. How the thumbsticks map to in-game turns, I still think Call of Duty does it better. 50 plus hours into Battlefield 4 without playing Call of Duty, that's that, I was blaming that my problem before is going back between the two, but still, Battlefield 4 only in the last month, and I still cannot track targets as well in Battlefield as I could in Call of Duty. So I'm going to say that they're making up for some of those problems uh, with more aim assist. Battlefield 3 had a fair amount of aim assist, even Snap 2 aim assist, but I find it more obtrusive in Battlefield 4. I think two things really. One, it seems to pull you all the way onto the edge of your target. In Battlefield 3 you can still be a little bit off, and in 4 it will pull you vertically, not just horizontally. So you think you're lining up for a headshot, and then you get pulled down into the torso. I clearly demonstrated that in the very first clip of the video on test range. So I've been trying to think, what types of things does this encourage? What does it discourage? How does it affect gameplay? And the first and most obvious one is that you want to get close with hip fire before you ADS, so that when you shoulder the gun, you know you'll be on target and you can immediately pull the trigger. There are obviously ways to try and abuse it. You can just spam the left trigger. There were a couple clips in the video that didn't play out quite as great, but I think showed some of the ideas off that I didn't actually commentate. Things like, before you spawn in, you've got the black screen. It seems like the aim assist may do something then. <laughs> you, it's really hard to tell. You don't know if you would have been on target anyway, or if you just should have sprayed and prayed from the hip. But it's funny to think that you might not be able to see anything, but you might just lock onto a target as you spawn into the game. <laughs> Then of course there are obviously the flashbangs, just looking right through them like they're not even there. Or, my personal favorite, when you're peeking around cover. I think you still need line of sight on the guy when you first start the peek or lean, but if you've got that, it seems like you do get a little bit of aim assist still, and so you can pop out from mostly behind cover and suddenly lock right onto target. But, as you start to play with it more, it becomes very obvious that hitting a moving target can suddenly become harder because the aim assist will drag you right onto where they were, and you'll start shooting and they'll all go behind him, and so then you're trying to lead your target again to catch back up. That gets really weird. At times, I feel like it can be advantageous to be the second person to engage in a gunfight. Say you're running across the street, just wide out in the open, just run for it, and some guy's like, oh, I see that idiot running across the street. Stops, turns, looks at you, gets the snap to target aim assist, maybe hits you with a bullet, and then starts trying to catch up as you keep running, and you're like, oh, that guy is standing still, he's an easy target. And so you just turn, snap the target aim assist, and take a couple shots and he's gone. Uh, because he was standing still while, and you got the snap to target aim assist while he was ADS already trying to get on target. That might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I know I'm going to try and be much more conscious about trying to hip fire people, especially at closer ranges, who are sprinting around, and keep moving myself so that I don't get in that scenario. I know it's really frustrating to think, oh, I got the first shot off on that guy and he was just running around like an idiot, but then actually end up dying. That's, that's incredibly frustrating. And I don't want to blame everything on aim assist. That's mostly my fault for not actually getting a kill in those scenarios, but it's still really, really frustrating. And so ends my 18 kill streak on Operation Locker Domination. It was good fun while it lasted. Ah, uh, but back to aim assist. 
you may have noticed a conspicuous lack of a couple of options from the Battlefield arsenal and a video that might be made about abusing aim assist. And yes, I did try the slug pump shotgun, the 870, with an ACOG. It was kind of funny, but it didn't really show off how crazy things could be. I'll put it that way. Uh, when you get out to the range where the aim assist really helps, the slugs are two-hit kills normally. And uh, with the pump shotgun, yeah, okay, well, that was well-aimed shots, but, you know, whatever. I could have been just as effective with an assault rifle or something else. But mostly there were no bolt-action sniper rifles in there. Because as far as I can tell, at least with all these sight options that I have, they don't get aim assist. So that's not a thing, thankfully. But what that does mean is that bolt-action snipers? You want to be sniping past 100 meters, because that appears to be where the aim assist cuts off. At least for the red dots and probably the mid-zoom scopes as well. And so if you can get past that distance, suddenly the additional magnification is really helpful. If not, you're in trouble. I think there were a couple, there was one clip in particular from Paracel Storm Domination. I'm looking back towards a spawn point, a sniper sends around a couple feet from my face. I turn and look at him and kill him and probably get the one-shot headshot bug too, because he probably just spawned in, and I don't think any of my teammates have been shooting at him, and then do the same thing to his teammate. And that's because that was just inside of 100 meters, and so I got that advantage. Uh, if he'd been a little further away, it would have probably gone much, much better for him. On a similar note, for the small range of things that I have tested with, the RFB, the default DMR, does get aim assist, but the SKS doesn't seem to. I haven't tried all of the DMR and scope possibilities, but there is something odd going on there where the RFB will get aim assist when the SKS doesn't. I don't know if that's a bug, which way they intend it to be, but that means that for console players, uh, if you want your aim assist, don't use the SKS. Instead, stick with the RFB, which, I mean, you've already got the unlocks for, so why not? So what does this do to the whole skill curve of Battlefield? The getting better at the game results in actually doing better. Well, obviously at the high end it makes quite the mess of things, as this is just the high level skill of very precisely aiming that you're pretty much taking out of the game. And it really only becomes a factor when it gets in the way, when it causes problems. For the most part, you just impose a skill cap on how good people can be, at least with respect to aiming, in the game. The situation I see as being far more common and more people are going to run into is where people are good enough to take advantage of this versus people who aren't. You do have to be fairly close to your target to get the aim down sights aim assist. Wow, that's a mouthful. And so I guess on test range, when you line up your hip fire between any of the pairs of targets, it will pick one for you. And there's probably a little bit more than that to work with on the opposite sides. But if you just line up your crosshairs between the two of them, you'll find yourself on the edge of one of them. And you can see, if you watch the, uh, the middle clip where I take down, what is it, eight targets in like, I forget how many seconds you have to before they reset. But that took a couple tries to figure out how to best do that and what I wanted to put in the video. You can see the, <laughs> the backstops behind the targets are all torn up from my, uh, my few attempts it took to get that right. But after a couple tries, I managed to do it fairly consistently, actually. Now, DICE has said that they reduced the aim assist uh, since the beta, I believe it was. I get the impression that's the distance it will pull you from when you aim down sights. Uh, I could be wrong of lugging. There are lots of factors. There are other forms of aim assist in the game. It's just the aim down sights aim assist is by far the most obvious and troublesome. But it's still there, and if you're good enough to use it, you're going to find you have a significant advantage over the people who aren't. So not only does it add this skill cap at the high end, there's this weird gap in the middle where a lot of people are going to notice it where you're good enough to aim fairly close from the hip and then aim down sights, or you're not, and you can't, can't take advantage of that. And I think that is one of the most serious reasons uh, why this should not be in multiplayer games. Yeah, we can talk about how COD flattens the skill curve or how we should hate on noobs, but seriously, if you're not going to reward small incremental improvement in skill and put some kind of barrier in there that says, hey, if you're not able to do at least this much, you're going to get slaughtered, that seems kind of, kind of bad to me. 
I am personally fine with the decrease in sensitivity, both from hip fire and ADS, when you're within a reasonable range and within line of sight of your target. I think that's a really good way to try and make it a little bit easier without actually doing things for the player. There were a few comments regarding the music, which I do agree was a bit of a strange choice. It is Russian, and the title translates to Let Me Go, and that's about as far as I really care. As for why that's the track, it mostly comes down to it just being really difficult to find music for videos. Uh, I'm not willing to pay for stuff because I basically don't make much money doing this, and there's only so much out there. I listen to a lot of stuff trying to pick out things that I think might work, uh, and I listen to a lot of really bad music, frankly, and I just... <laughs> uh, eventually you find stuff that works okay for some stuff, and even things that I wouldn't really normally listen to might set the right mood for a video. I can collect clips, make notes, start to outline things, but until I settle on a music track, it's really hard to start cementing stuff into place. And at some point, I just have to pick something and go with it and pretty much stick with it in order to just get through making the video. So for example, when I was just spitballing in Vegas, here's the track I first pulled up to start to work with. We have to go, so we settle down. Now that could be a lot of fun, but that is just begging for slow-mo in my opinion. There's no way I'm going to play the clips in regular time and have it make sense like that, and that's what I want to show off playing in normal time with the aim assist. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll try some electronica, uh, get some of that robot thing going, and so I pulled this one up. And that's okay. It might be a little bit upbeat for what I'm going for. It's also tagged fitness or some such, and I don't know, it started to wear on me after a couple of listens, and I do have to go through the song dozens of times while I'm putting all the clips together, and I, I didn't know if I wanted to listen to that one that many times. So I kept looking for other stuff, and I went off looking for auto-tune singing, and I don't know, it, there's not a whole lot of it in the Russian thing I picked out, but there's a little bit, and in the end I didn't actually make the joke about auto-tune singing with aim assist yet. Yeah, I, I don't know, I just couldn't make it work. So let's wrap things up there. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time with some more Battlefield 4.